Welcome in, friends, to another edition of Sports from the Couch here on Mercado Airwaves. I'm your host, Mike Mercado. I want to thank you so much for making us a part of your day. Before we get to this latest segment from the latest edition of the Sports Cubicle on WCPT 820 AM, we want to remind you to follow us all over in the universe. I'm on Twitter at Mike A Media, Instagram, Mike Mercado Media. You could be interactive with the show on Twitter at Couch Sports Talk and at Sports Cubicle TV. Like, rate, review, and share us on all major podcast platforms, wherever you get your favorite podcast at Mercado Airwaves. Check out the video version of the podcast over at YouTube.com slash Mercado Airwaves Network. We have swag over at Teespring.com slash Mercado Airwaves. And if you would like to get our weekly NFL picks, check us out at Patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves. Now enjoy this segment from the latest edition of the Sports Cubicle on WCPT 820 AM with Dan Marver, Devin Tingle, Paul Shivari, and myself, Mike Mercado. I think we all have to admit, even with all the ups and downs, the injuries, the uncertainty, and the lack of trades at the trade deadline, the Chicago Bulls have found a way to not only be good, but stay interesting. We'll see what happens with these rumors of the buyout market with Tristan Thompson. Zach Levine seems like he will be okay with his knee. Alex Caruso will be dribbling the basketball. Pat Williams is on his way back. No real news on Lonzo Ball, but the Chicago Bulls are right up there in the standings as we hit the All-Star break. It is Devin Tingle. It is Paul Shivari. It is the marvelous one, Dan Marver. I'm Mike Mercado here on the Sports Cubicle as we are enjoying. It's not even the halfway point of the season anymore. They're over 50 games into the season. But the Chicago Bulls, I have to admit, while I know I am a homer and I love this team and I'm excited about this team, they have legitimately put themselves in a place where you can really put expectations on this team. Now that we're at this point of the season, we're at the All-Star break. The Chicago Bulls have a true rookie sensation in this draft class in Isle Sumo. They have two All-Stars. They have a really nice player in Nikola Vucevic, and Kobe White is developing. Marvelous one, your thoughts of this crazy up and down, but yet fun and entertaining Bull season? They've outperformed what I would have anticipated. The, the front office change was a plus. Billy Donovan's a proven winner with the Florida Gators and Oklahoma City Thunder. And somehow they got the Rosen and the Sumnu fell to the second round. They got him. So, I mean, and Levine apparently is going to be okay. He's going to participate in the play, in the uh, All-Star game. So, I mean, the, uh, to make the playoffs would have been beyond my imagination. And that looks like a real possibility. Although it does get kind of tight if you slip a little bit between, you know, four and eight. But besides that, uh, uh, if they can hang in there, I think they, you know, have an excellent chance to make the playoffs, which is my goal. I don't care about number one, number two. I just, in a short series, you know, if if the, the Rosen goes wild like he's been doing, I mean, I mean, it, 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 even if the other teams focus on him, it, it's imp- it, he can't be stopped. It's it's incredible. I mean, uh, it's almost uh, you know, to, to, you know, not like Kobe Bryant or whatever, you know, somebody in the past where they focus on the guy. And he still scores. It's just remarkable, you know. And and they have the power, the center, which I mean, and they have some guards, some depth there. When they get the, the starting guards back, they seems like they have a, a team that has a chance to win a couple series. In, in my opinion, in the playoffs, marvelous one. It's funny we don't want to, you know, compare him to Kobe, but you know who we could compare him to? That is Will Chamberlain, because Demar Derozan, Debo, who scored thirty eight points, going sixteen for twenty seven against the Sacramento Kings, the last game before the All Star break. That was 59% shooting, right? Well, DeMar DeRozan is now the first player in NBA history to score 35 points while shooting better than 50% from the field in seven consecutive games. That was the mark of six games that was originally done by Wilt Chamberlain. He has made this team exciting. He is a true superstar. And, you know, and this guy's, the funny thing is, is Will Chamberlain's shots were from two feet away in most cases. <laughs> yeah. So no wonder he had a higher percentage. <laughs> yeah, and he was like six inches taller than most of the other guys there, too. And, Pauly, you covered Io in in a sense that you were a you had your eye on, on Io for a long time. You watch U of I basketball like a hawk. To see him develop around these guys, to have these many minutes. But the young man is a professional. He is a student. What did you think when you saw him not only drop to the second round, then get drafted by the Bulls, then has been leaned on by Billy Donovan and this team to where they're at right now, where he is not only a rookie, obviously we see the rookie in him, but the man is a pro rookie if there's ever been the case. Your thought on the Bulls and Io? Well, I, I think this would have been his senior season if he stayed at Illinois. And, and selfishly, 
I wanted him to come back for one more year <laughs> because he was just that good uh, to see the, you know, the Illini did not uh, complete their destiny last year when they got bounced out early by Loyola. That was such a great team. Um, I was shocked that he fell in the second round because the way they were talking about him in college nationally, I want to say he was, uh, you know, a Naismith Award finalist, or at least in the conversation. He was uh, All-American. You know, you're talking about a really good basketball player, and he really showed it in the Big Ten, the way he could close down games, the way he can score, play defense, the way he can facilitate offense as a point guard, even though he can – uh, do just as well as a shooting guard. He had all of the attributes to play in the NBA. So it was no surprise that he was going to go to the show. The problem was he's better than a second round pick. And I think it speaks, it, it speaks to a whole different thing where it makes you wonder what were all of the other teams thinking in the NBA if they passed on Io DeSumo, or it makes you wonder if there was maybe some sort of underhanded thing going on where the Bulls ended up getting their guy. I mean, this is a guy that's never played basketball outside of the state of Illinois in terms of what team he plays for. So I think I think when you look at Io, I think you're looking at a guy that, yeah, he's a rookie. He's young. He's developing. He's got to get used to the show. You know, will he be an all timer? Probably not. But in this day and age, in this NBA, he's got all of the attributes possible to be a versatile ball player. And in the NBA, if you're a versatile ball player, if you're a professional, you can make a lot of money, you can win a lot of games, and you can have a nice career. So that is hopefully what the young man is building. Devin, what did you think about this team at the United Center? The way they're playing, all the adversity, and yet here they are. They don't get all the love on national media, but it doesn't seem to matter. DeMar DeRozan's going to do his thing. Zach Levine is going to try to get that max, and this team is going to try to get a top four seed. Your thoughts on doubles? Only the Bulls. What more can I really say there? But, you know, the team, they're, they've been dabbling back and forth between that first place, second place. I mean, and again, it's Chicago here. Unless you're the Chicago Bears, the Chicago Cubs, you really don't get that national coverage, even if you're terrible. So, of course, when a team wins in a sport that, you know, doesn't have as much national coverage to begin with alone, isn't going to get as much love here. But definitely nicer. I mean, you know, DeMar DeRozan for MVP, like since other than, well, Derrick Rose did win it. But, like, who was another guy that they, since then, have they really had a player they talked about? It's like, this guy's going to be the MVP of the league. I sure as hell can't think of one. You guys can correct me. Please let me know here. But definitely, it is nice seeing this team. You know, now they're starting to actually win again. They're getting in this groove here. They've they've started to realize this is the time, you know, we're just not going to the all-star break. But this is kind of, you know, this is the start of put up or shut up time here. And definitely... Nice to see the Bulls, you know, not making losing these games that they shouldn't be losing here and not losing them. And if they are losing, they're pretty close. So I mean to say they've been definitely, you know, getting a lot better at keeping an offense here. The defense has its issues. But again, if you can put up as many points, you know, 120 per game against some really stylish teams like the Kings uh, the other day. I mean, uh, at the time of recording, I should say, you definitely are a team that's got a shot here. And I mean, they're really good. Uh, my big thing is if they do make it to the championship game, I can't think of a team in the West. The, the, the Western Conference is really good. But that's a whole other story. You know, let's just talk about regular season right now. But the Eastern Conference, the Bulls are definitely putting up big numbers. They're definitely making an impact here. And I got to say, it's it's really sh- exciting out here in Chicago after we had to deal with the Bears. The Cubs had to deal with losing everyone. The White Sox had to get you know destroyed in the first round of the ALDS. So it's just nice to have a team here that's actually winning. And there's really no controversy happening. Yeah, and this is a different era of Bulls basketball. You're seeing it with AK, Mark Eversley, Billy Donovan. You've seen it with Michael Reinsdorf and not Jerry Reinsdorf, the way it was with John Paxson, Gar Foreman, and Jerry. There was a lot of winning then. Derek won an MVP. The team went to the conference finals. There were good vibes on that team. They had LeBron and the Cavs on the ropes at one point. LeBron hit a big shot. They didn't win many games in that Heat series. And what I think the difference between those try-hard Bulls team with Derrick Rose dragging them along and Joe Kim Noah pumping people up. This Bulls team is full of professionals. DeMar DeRozan chose to come here. They got Lonzo Ball on a tampering sign and trade. They are in the buyout market for a professional center, a, a star in the league, a name in the league. This is a new way this Bulls team is going at it. There is different vibes. They may not win the championship, but it's hard to win a championship in sports. But right now, the Chicago Bulls bend the knee to nobody. They may lose a series to Philadelphia. They may lose a series to Brooklyn. They may lose a series to Milwaukee. But here's the point. As correspondents, pundits, fans... 
do the Milwaukee Bucks, Philadelphia 76ers, Brooklyn Nets, Miami Heat want to play the Chicago Bulls in a seven-game series? Do they want to deal with DeMar DeRozan, a healthy Chicago Bulls team? That's the question, but you're counter to all that, right? And this is why this, this is going to be a special season. Every other team that's good can say that too. Do you really want to play Brooklyn? Do you really want to play Philly? Miami's pretty damn good. Look at those little Cleveland Cavaliers. They're actually giants. It is going to be a fun time in the Eastern Conference. We want to know your thoughts. Let us know. Are you enjoying this bowl season? How far can they really go when they get back from the All-Star break? They are beating the bums and staying competitive against the other Kings. So it should be really fun the rest of the way. Let us know your thoughts on Twitter at SportsCubicle TV. It's the marvelous one, Dan Marver. It's Paulie Shivari. It's Devin Tingle. I'm Mike Mercado.